told everyone what. Let me guess, is it about Yuri or Sayori? Like everything that happened? Well, I think almost everybody knew about Sayori, right? But I'm sure it has something to do with Yuri. Um, I have connections with a lot of people in the school. I sent a message out to nearly the entire student body. Monica, what was in those messages? She refuses to look at me. I told everyone. About Yuri, okay, so it was Yuri. Um, about her cutting. Oh, okay, so for just a moment my heart stops beating. I thought we were going to see a flashback. I right, stand there for a while in shock. The sound of nurses walking by. The EKG is beeping. Even a storm outside has been drawn by my own silence. I feel like I'm floating in a void. As I stare into the abyss, it stares back. The same feeling when I told Sayori I was in a coma. Um, but this time I'm not crying. I've become numb to pain. Time doesn't heal wounds on the heart. They just fill with scar tissue and the pain lessens. But the pain never truly leaves. Um, why, Monica? It was the only option I had left. The only way I knew to bring you to me. This is why Yuri wanted to drop out. Whenever she goes to school, everyone will know what she's been hiding. Everyone will see her as the girl who cuts herself for pleasure. My mind races and my heart beats out of my chest. I can hear my own blood flowing rapidly throughout my body. My eyes began to flutter every single inch of these colorless, col colorless halls. <laughs> I whisper to myself, I need to find Yuri. Even after all this, you still can't let her go. Look about Monica. Every cell of my body wants to beat her to the ground. <laughs> I ball my fist. All I need is for my nervous system to send a signal um, to send my hand flying through the air. But I just stand still. Instead, I use my last reserve of energy to make a break to the hospital doors. Whoa, okay. My feet carry me as I trudge through the icy rain in Yuri's house. I throw myself against the front door and reach for the knob. Locked. I don't bother knocking. I clumsily lift up the doormat and find a spare key. Wow. <laughs> you knew where it was. After numerous attempts with shaky hands, I finally stick the key in. Once I hear the bolts turn, I throw open the door. Alright, so I pan my eyes frantically through the downstairs of Yuri's house. It's barren. I search everywhere, but there's no signs of Yuri. She had to have left some sort of trace. I begin opening all her drawers and cabinets. Upon opening one drawer, I find something that looks familiar. I take this cylindrical object, and it makes a rattling sound as I lift it up. My hand is a bottle of pills. A full bottle of pills. The pills that Yuri was supposed to take to suppress her urge to cut herself. Uh oh. I read the label. Each bottle contains exactly 60 pills. I rip open the cap and pour the pills onto the table. I scatter and use my hands to push them into a pile. Flooding each pill one by one, I begin counting. One, two, three, nine, eighteen, twenty-five, thirty-six, forty-nine, fifty-seven. 58, 59. My next finger, I slide the next pill, or the last pill next to the others. 60. Yeah, shit. <laughs> um, I guess she she hasn't really um. She hasn't been hoping at all, like hoping herself at all. Anyway, that's what that's that's what this is um signifying. I stare blankly at the pile of medicine, unable to focus my thoughts. For a second, I even for I even forget where I am. What the. Interrupted by a single raindrop hitting the counter and making a small splash. Followed by another one, and another. I look up. To my surprise, a wet spot is on the ceiling, and it's and it's probably leaking out. First, I assume the rain, but I remember this is the first floor. An imaginary blueprint of Yuri's house begins to form in my head. <laughs> I'm in a the kitchen, then directly above me should be Yuri's bathroom. I rush upstairs at an ungodly speed. I crash through the bedroom doors. Immediately, my eyes begin to look around for any signs of Yuri. Alas, there's no one here. Except, besides the bed, is an opened box. My stomach churns as I slowly creep towards it. It's Yuri's knife collection. We never threw it out. Oh my god, I remember why. Because, <laughs> like, um, we, had, we got the news of Sayori and we kind of forgot about that. As I walk up to it, I notice a single empty spot where a blade once laid. There's something else I notice. The sound of water. Not the melodic orchestra of the raindrops. The running water of a faucet. I crane my neck towards the sound. It's coming from the bathroom. Reach out and tightly grip the handle. Locked. I have no intention on knocking. I step back and prepare myself. Alright, break the door. Charge door, yeah. I run full speed out the door. My shoulder connects with the wood and I bounce back. Again. I plant my feet firmly. Another sprint to the door. 
Again, I hit the door. I bounced onto the floor. My shoulder aches in pain. I get up and plant my feet again. Third time's a charm. Go. Alright. I hurl my body <laughs> my birdie. I hurl my body against the wood. It gives, but it doesn't open. Once again I'm on the floor. The door busted off its hinges. My body is crying in pain. I use my good arm to push myself up. After collecting myself, I replant my feet. Again. Alright, this should be it. I summon every bit of strength I have. My shoulder crashes into the door one last time. It breaks open. Okay, I'm a little scared of what I'm gonna see. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> like, this is actually giving me, um... I'm panicking. <laughs> so, I lay on the floor and my energy sapped. I can no longer move my arm. I fear I've dislocated it. My arm is screaming in agony. Ugh. I try to move, but I'm in too much pain. Ugh. I also notice I'm wet. Sweat? No, not sweat, but water. The floor has become covered in water from the faucet. Uh oh no. I know just what happened. Um, we look up. Oh. Okay. okay, that actually scared me. I'm not gonna lie. That's scary. So anyway, thumbnail. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. That was a bad time for that, but. Yeah, that. I swear I saw that and I. I, just, I like, I leaned back in my chair really, like, really far. <laughs> that, that was like a jump scare. Anyway, what? What the hell? No. I try to shout this, but my voice barely comes out. No. 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 Sprawl towards the tub. It really lays in a red tinted water filled tub. Wait. What is that? I don't over the toilet and throw up. However, my stomach is empty and my abdomen just cramps and tightens. My vision. <laughs> My vision begins to blur as tears fill my eyes. I watch as they crash and join the Scarlet River on the towel floor. To say I can't think properly is an understatement. I lift myself up. There's no pain as the adrenaline courses through my body. Yuri? Yuri. Rubber chin and tilt her face towards me. Yuri! I shout in denial over her still body. Her fair skin has now turned pure white. Ugh. Purple hair now tinted red from the pool. I lift her arm uh, from out the water. They show new lines, each going perpendicular to the ones of the past. Her motionless face stares into nothingness. I just sit on the blood-stained floor and stare at her. Tears continue to flow down my face. The only thing I can do is stare into her lavender eyes. And for the first time, they fail to pierce back into mine. Oh my god. So act four, house full of roses. Oh, we walked like a special poem. Would you like to read it? Alright. Okay. So, denial. This isn't real. The pain inside me. The things that I see. This isn't real. I still think maybe there's a chance. Maybe if I take a second glance. This isn't real. My mind is just playing a trick. A reality I choose not to pick. This isn't real. I don't believe it. I can't believe it. I shouldn't believe it. It's just lies. It's not real. What isn't real can't hurt me, so why do I hurt? This isn't real. 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 It can't be real. Alright. For the second time today, I find myself in the hospital. The other side this time. The emergency room. I sit on the colorless starch, wait, starch sheets of a hospital bed. A shorter sling over my right arm. With adrenaline gone, I rely on painkillers to keep myself stable. My memories are only stored in pieces. I visited Sayori in the hospital. I ran into Monica. Found a full bottle of pills. Broke down Yuri's door. Then I called 911. My head is still throbbing. Um, it physically hurts to remember the events that just transpired. My eyes switch between the four walls that surround me. I stretch my neck to look out into the emergency room. Nurses and doctors occasionally walk by. Finally, one nurse steps inside. Hello. Uh, hello? How are you feeling? I don't know how to answer. My mind is drugged by both painkillers and shock. The nurse then goes into a procedure of asking me questions to assess my mental state. Can you tell me your name? Yes. Shock is one hell of a drug. What is your name? Oh, uh, Jongen. She continues to read some notes on the computer. Do you know what day it is? Uh, we had a visit with Dr. Lincoln Saturday, which was yesterday, so... Sunday. The nurse nods. And do you know where you are? 
You're all too familiar looking walls answer that. The hospital. Stare at the navy blue swing around my arm. You dislocated it. We were able to pop it back into place, but it will take uh, time for the full heal. It's best to keep it in a sling for a while. Yuri. Where's Yuri? Girl you came in with? I'm sorry, I'm not a nurse. I believe she's being treated by a doctor down the hall. Oh, I bolt off the bed and exit the room. Alright, the nurse calls out. Hey, wait! I continue to run down the hall. Whoa there, kiddo. A man in a white coat intercepts me. Are you the doctor? I am a doctor, yes. <laughs> Wait. We're the one who came in with that girl. Yuri? Where is she? Is she okay? The doctor's face says it all. Why don't we take a seat? He puts his hand on my shoulder, but I swat it off. No. No. I don't believe you. Let me see her. Where is she? I'm sorry. By the time we were able to treat her, it was already too late. You're lying. You're lying. She's not dead. She's not. My mind begins to fill, uh, coming up with a proper reaction. I see guards turn the corner, quickly approaching me. Doctor places his hand up as the notion of the hold off. I finally collapse onto a wooden bench. Doctor gets down on one knee and places a hand on my shoulder again. I press my face into my palms. This isn't real. This isn't real. Um, okay, it isn't real. I learned something on this bench just now. The bench where the little girl is... Wait, the bench where the little girl is told she has cancer. The bench where a child learns their parent had a fatal heart attack or their mom is told their son was in a horrific car accident. The same bench where I'm told uh, the one thing I cared about in this world has been ripped away from me. The exact same bench where I learned that love isn't something tangible. True love only exists in moments. And then another moment it's gone before you even knew you had it. Oh, another poem? Okay. Okay. So, anger. Deadly seven sins. Lined like, a lined like a shopping list. Which one do I pick today? I grab the bright red bottle and pop the cap. Veins fill with hate and eyes fill with torment. First qu oh, fists quenched, ready to break. Break anything and everything. The fires of hell corrupt my soul. Lashing out at anyone who comes close. Tearing and ripping. Ripping and tearing. Tearing at the things I love. Tearing at my very being. I'm no longer myself. A spirit of wrath knocks on my door, and I'm foolish enough to let him in. Okay, four days later. Okay. Let's get through this and I think I'll end it. So, Doc, you ever look at someone and your heart just melts? Uh, I'm sorry about what happened. I just still can't believe she's really gone. He jots down some things on his notepad. How does that all make you feel? Empty. I don't really feel anything anymore. It's a bit hard to describe, really. Do you know what nothingness feels like, Doc? Your mind has some time- or your mind has had some time to process the initial shock. This period can be a dangerous time for you. A lot of different emotions may go through your mind. Look, can you just give me medication or something so I can leave? We'll get to that. I can't just give them to you straight away. I asked Trace to wall the rooms. Uh, can you tell me what's on your mind? What's on my mind? I repeat him absentmindedly. What's on my mind? It's good to get your mind off the event. You don't understand, Doc. I can't get it out of my head. My voice cracks with every word. Oh, what do you mean? You weren't there. I begin to raise my voice at him. You didn't see the look in her eyes. You didn't have to sit in an ambulance and tell the paramedics what happened. You didn't have to relive every single moment while being questioned by the police. You're not the person who every single time, every single time I close my eyes, Doc, I just see her sitting in that bathtub. Oh, sniff. Wait. <laughs> I don't know that picked up. I just want that image out of my head. That's why I need you to give me some pills or something. Okay. I look up at him. It's going to be okay. I can give you a prescription based off what you're feeling. So just keep telling me what you feel. I don't feel anything. I scream at him and slam my fist onto the table. Oh wait, like... <laughs> like that. <laughs> um, I just don't understand. I did everything right. I did everything I could, but it wasn't enough. Fight. How does that make you feel- Oh, <laughs> Stop asking me how I feel, dammit! <laughs> I shoot up onto my feet. Please, Jongun. 
Don't say shit to me. <laughs> Point my finger at him maliciously. You don't care about me. I'm just another patient to you. You don't care about me or Yuri or anyone. We're all the same in your eyes. Just another paycheck for you. My words spit harshly out of my mouth. We're just a way for you to feed your fancy lifestyle. Maybe some fancy jewelry for your wife. Or, or a fun vacation with your kids. <laughs> that's all we mean to you. Huh? You know that's not true. I chose this profession because I want to help people who aren't strong enough to help themselves. I scramble back and forth around the office. My voice cracks under my anger. Just give me back my life. I grab the coffee table and topple it over. Damn. <laughs> table flip. <laughs> Papers spill the air as the doctor instinctively jumps back. Pens clatter against the floor. You sit on your chair, ask me a couple questions, and send me on my way. You talk about trauma as if you know what I'm going through. <laughs> you see so many people with different problems, and yet, you look at them all the same. So who's the real crazy person, Doc? <laughs> Stands there like he's frozen in place. That's what I thought. I'm out of here. Jongen, please. I storm through the door and don't look back. I sit bitterly on my couch and bury my face into my palms. My hands tremble in anger. I run my fingers through my hair until it looks like it destroys a bird nest. Tears begin to stream down my face. Tears of frustration and anxiety. My legs launch me back up at, wait, at a m match speed. I don't know what that means. For some reason, I can't stay still. I begin to pace my living room floor. My eyes continue to flash between the corners of my house. I don't think my eyes are focused on one stagnant object one day, now that I think about it. Oh, ah! <laughs> Scream at the top of my lungs in order to release all my bottle of anger. Wait, ah! I collapse back onto the couch, my, er my energy sapped. <laughs> my breathing grows heavy and raspy. For some reason, my frustration still hasn't left. I lean over my couch and grab a potted plant. Uh-oh. Yep, there it goes. The, the pot is gone. Charge ricochet in every direction. My heart continues to beat furiously. If this goes any longer, my chest is going to explode. I throw my body into the wall. With a thud, my knuckles collide on- Wait, collide with the sheetrock. Again. 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 Go, go. Sorry. Uh, my fist goes through the wall. I slowly retract my hand back. My knuckles are covered in blood. My right arm in a sling and my left hand bloody. I absentmindedly stare at the red patches of lost skin around my knuckles. Twenty out of the same color would be used to represent love, also represents anger. I guess they're more or less the same. They both can destroy something within seconds. Um, both only ever end in pain. My body gives and I fall onto the floor. And just like me, my whole world comes crashing down as well. I weigh lifeless. I quench my fist until my knuckles turn white. <sighs> I let out a long breath. Eventually my body relaxes, and the color of my knuckles return. <laughs> my heart still continues to beat irregular irregularly. <laughs> what the fuck, I can't read words. <clears throat> anyway, I take a look at my wounds. I just don't understand. Why me? Physical exhaustion eventually overtakes my hyperactive mind. I find myself drifting off asleep. Oh, another poem? Okay. And then we'll end it. So, bargaining. Why wasn't it me? Take me instead, but leave her here. I lie awake in bed, flooded with tears, or flooded with all my fears, because it should have been me. I don't know what went wrong, how she got away. I should have known along. I couldn't make it all okay, so it should have been me. I'll change my way of life just to see her again. I'm in so much pain and strife. I guess this is the end, so just take me. But that's not how you work. From what I can infer, you won't bring her forth, so I can just be with her. So if you won't take me, I'll take myself. Oh god. Oh. There's a lot to take in in this part, but uh, we will end it. Especially with the, especially with the terrifying silence. <laughs> so, in the top right corner of your screen, there will be an annotation to the next part. Once it becomes available. And I'll see you all next time. Peace.